What's up, Internet? Arsha Mirsha here. Another episode of More Than Marketing. Today we're talking LinkedIn, Facebook, maybe a little bit of Spotify, and I'll talk to you about some macroeconomics that I see in the digital space as well. Stay tuned. Let's do it. Today, I'm, at the end of the episode, I'm going to talk to you about some macroeconomics that I see happening in the in the digital uh, kind of tech world, so to speak. Uh, you know, these companies, uh, Google, Facebook, uh, Microsoft, or LinkedIn, they're in the stock market news and in the international news and even in the politics news, right? Um, I'll talk to you about my opinions on those. But first, let me help you save some money and get your CPAs looking better as well. Uh, number one is, uh, let's talk about Facebook a little bit. Facebook, uh, back in September, they rolled out their um, publisher list. So if you're running ads on Facebook and you're using their audience network, you can see where your ads are running and then you can add that, add any publishers that you don't want to a block list. Okay, so like, you know, I don't know, I've seen clients do, they don't want to be on certain sites with certain industries, like maybe porn or um, religious or something like that. And so you can add them to your block list. You could also, uh, if you know your audience is not on certain uh, publishers, you can also block those as well. So you save some of your budget and then you can put towards places where your audience is. So that's Facebook. Um, I want to go on to uh, Spotify. This was really cool news because podcasting, podcasting has been like heating up, blowing up. It's like the, the new thing. Uh, everyone's got a podcast now, including yours truly, right? You're listening to it. Uh, Spotify has added the ability to track impressions, reach, and audience data through their ads now, Spotify ads. So if you're a, you know, B2B or B2C and you're trying to uh, reach a certain audience and you know that that audience listens to a certain podcast, you can go to Spotify and say, hey, I want to advertise on this, on this podcast or this category. And, and, uh, and before you wouldn't, well, before you, if you did that, you wouldn't get any like data. You wouldn't know how many people listen to it. You wouldn't know, um, you know who those people might be, their, their demographics and what have you. But now they've ruled out that you, you actually can get that data from them, which is awesome. Uh, it's, I think it's the first, yeah, it's the first podcast network to, to do that. So that's, that's huge. Uh, I think podcast advertising is going to continue to become more um, self-service. Like in this Spotify example, is self-service. Because in the early days of podcasting, even today, uh, the best way to to advertise on a um, on a on someone's podcast is to reach out to the host or reach out to the people producing that podcast and tell them, hey, I want to advertise and and you know strike a deal with them, right? So if you're listening to this and you want to advertise on this podcast, you'd reach out to me and say, hey, I got ten bucks, you know, play play my ad, right? Now, I think that's really cool. I think that's a step in the right direction. Uh, I think that advertisers and 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 agencies. They want that data. They need that data to, to make decisions. So well done, Spotify. Uh, clap to you. Claps to you. Well done. Proud of you. Keep pioneering that space. We like to hear it. The other thing I, I'm thinking on Spotify is you know, when you listen to a podcast and it has ads, if the ads are just like built in, if it's, uh, if it's the host like kind of pitching something, you know, people can skip those, right? Whereas with something like Pandora, uh, when you're listening to music, you can't skip that ad. So that's it's kind of interesting. And I think with Spotify, it's going to be that way too. So that's uh, Spotify. Let's let's move on to LinkedIn, which rolled out uh, new features to their business pages. So if you have a, a page uh, on LinkedIn, doesn't matter if you're B2B, B2C, you, you probably have a page on, on LinkedIn, whether it's for recruiting or uh, for promoting your, your products and services. Again, doesn't really matter. You have a page there. And they've rolled out some new features. So among those features are the ability to post as either the page or post as yourself. So I'm Arsham. I got a web mechanics business page. When I went there as an admin, I couldn't post as, as Arsham. I could only post as web mechanics. Now I can post as Arsham if I want to. That's kind of cool. It makes it a little more personal. Uh, another feature which is designed to, you know, foster connections and, and make things more personal is you can now, 
page admins can send invitations to their connections to come follow the page. If your goal is to increase your LinkedIn followership so you get more organic reach, some more earned media, this is your feature. <laughs> this is the feature you've been waiting for, right? So you know, make your highly connected folks in your organization an admin of your page and show them how to go in and invite their connections to come follow your page. So then when you uh, post updates, it's more likely that, they, that those updates show up in their newsfeed on LinkedIn. The feature I'm most excited about is uh, LinkedIn Live. So that was in beta, and it that was in beta last February, and now it's just broadly applicable to or available to all pages. So just like Facebook Live or Instagram Live, Facebook pages, I'm sorry, LinkedIn uh, pages can go live. And I think that that's going to be a... I think I'm hypothesizing it's going to be pretty big for, you know, opening up the, the B2B, especially the B2B angle to get like real conversations going and creating content, if nothing else, right? If no one joins your LinkedIn live, at least you've created content, you know, so you'll probably see me on LinkedIn live here in the next month or so. Uh, so come follow web mechanics and uh, send me a connection request. Love to Love to chat and see me on LinkedIn Live. That's awesome. Well done, Microsoft. Well done, LinkedIn. Uh, it's actually kind of funny. It feels like, you know, the business business tools are following the the personal tools, but like with the whole live thing. But whatever. So then, macroeconomically, this digital space is kind of interesting. It, it, it heats up and cools down. Heats up and cools down. Most recently. Uh, in the last months or so, France was talking about levying a digital a, a digital tax. So France was going to say, "Hey, look, for I'm going to put three percent tax on you know digital companies or or tech companies rather, right?" So this is like Facebook, Apple, uh, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, and they're saying that. If you're one of these companies, we're going to just take 3% of your revenue off the top as, as taxes. As France was, was saying that. Now, it's interesting to me because all the biggest tech companies in the world are American companies. That's why if you look at our stock market, our stock market is at all-time highs. We keep breaking all-time highs, you know, it seems like every day. And I think 18% of the S&P's... Uh, S&P 500's market capitalization, 18% of it is made up of four or five of the biggest tech companies, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, Google, right? I believe it's those five make up 18% of the S&P 500. 500 companies, five of them make up 18%. Pretty interesting, right? 1% of the companies make up 18%. So, so I kind of understand why, you know, France or 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 any other country might look at that and say, hmm, you know what, we're going to take a little bit off the top. Uh, also, I, I understand, frankly, because there's a lot of discussion, especially in the EU, is, is really pioneering this. Um, you know, they started with GDPR, and then, uh, you know, now we have, uh, in California, uh, CCPA, but, you know, the EU is really concerned about their citizens' privacy and, and, and probably if these were, these American companies were European companies, they would have probably been under the gun for, for antitrust or, you know, which means uh, investigated to see if they have a monopoly or not. Whereas, you know, America is letting them grow and, and we're not, we don't seem as concerned about user privacy and what have you because you don't see many, you know, laws or bills being, being introduced or passed. Uh, around those. I don't know if, if that's good or bad, honestly, because, you know, I'm obviously an agency advertiser, right? I, I help companies advertise online and I love all that data. I need it. It makes our campaigns better. But I can understand because I'm a user too, right? I'm, I'm on the internet. I buy stuff on the internet. I get targeted with ads. And, um, and I'll be honest, like, I kind of like it, you know? Um, I think that 
my, at least I'm speaking, I hope for my generation, certainly for me, we believe, or I believe, I don't want to say we, I, I like convenience. So I'm willing to give up some privacy, some of my own data for convenience. Like I don't want to see an ad that's targeted towards women, for instance, right? Because I'm, it's probably not relevant for me. So, so that's why I'm okay with, with that data going out there. But, but I can see the other side as well. So this is very interesting. Now, to circle back on that France uh, 3% tax. Uh, so then the U.S. said, okay, if you do that, then we're going to levy a tariff on wine and cheese and champagne that comes from France. And that kind of back and forth uh, has led France to back down and, and state on the record that they're not going to pursue that tax in 2020. So that they may later on. But but it's interesting how this this uh, tech space and privacy and, and all that is, you know, heats up and cools down and and. You know, it's in the headlines, and then it's not, and then it's just interesting to see how it's going to continue to unfold. I, I feel like we're still sort of in the wild, wild west, although you do see some regulations coming down uh, to help users and, and consumers. And I, I think that's good uh, for the long term, and it's just, it's just fun to see it all unfold. And uh, I hope that was interesting to you. I'd love to hear what you think, you know, should... Should there be more laws? Does pri- you know, what do you think about privacy? Do you, you know, are you concerned about it or not? You know, there's also uh, uh, the CEO of Google came out, uh, I think today or yesterday, and said uh, he supports the EU's decision to basically put a ban on facial recognition technology being in public spaces for the next five years until lawmakers can catch up to uh, to the appropriate regulations and laws in that in that space so it's funny you know it's just regulation laws wild wild west tech big tech privacy big discussions to be had around it love to hear what you think about it kindly uh you know shoot me a note on any channel i'm on all of them right facebook twitter uh shoot me an email i don't care uh contact form on our site love to hear what you think um and hope you enjoyed this episode uh share it with a friend comment like it And uh, appreciate your time. See you next time. Cheers.